We always approach a patient going through A, B, C. But there is one exception to this where we do C, A, B. Circulation, then airway and breathing. And that's in the case of catastrophic bleeding, when there is an amputation of a limb or the penetration of an artery. In that case, we have to stop the bleeding or the patient will bleed to death before we ever manage to sort the airway. What we use in order to do this is a tourniquet, and this is one example of the tourniquets that we use. This one is called the Combat Application Tourniquet. So, we apply this as close to the site of bleeding as possible. Remember, everything below the tourniquet will be lost because we are going to cut the blood supply off completely. Fasten the tourniquet, it then has Velcro to keep it together and then twist the windlass until the bleeding stops. At that stage, you pop it under there just to hold it in place. There's a spot here to mark the time that you put the tourniquet on and it's also normal to put a T on the forehead so that it's clear to everybody that there is a tourniquet on the patient. So, we're just going to demonstrate wound management. We have our dressing pack which has been opened up using the sterile techniques which was demonstrated before. Opened up, we've got a drape. Patient's hand is placed over it. This is my sterile field. I've got my cleaning solution, which is normal, normal saline. I've got my gauze swabs from the dressing pack. Wearing my sterile gloves and I have my dressing to be applied afterwards. So the wound, I'm picking up with my left and using my right to just give it a, a wipe over. Picking up with the left, using the right just to get the surrounding tissues nice and clean. Then for the actual wound itself, I'm going to draw up the sterile saline and I'm just going to flush the wound. It's been caught on the drape below. And continue this process, just flushing the wound out, just making sure it's nice and clean. You continue this until you're happy or until all your solution has been used. When you've done that, discard and then use the the remainder of the gauze just to dry the, the surrounding tissues of the wound. So they'll be ready for the plaster to be applied. Okay, the dressing has been opened onto the sterile field. And I'm just going to peel the backing of one side without touching the actual dressing part. Apply that first half. And then the second part, I just grip and pull down there, affixing the dressing to the wound without actually touching the wound itself. I'm about to do some suturing, and for this, um, obviously, I will have need to have a sterile environment. I have all my equipment, and I now prepare the sterile. I get my gloves. And um, as I have everything, my, I'll use the needle. I also get a needle. And I've got this. I will have some fluids to clean up and I'm now going to drape the area that I want to suture.
I'm about to suture um, this laceration and first of all I want to um, clean the area. So I will just be gently dabbing some normal saline on the, on the area and I'm going to infiltrate it with lignocaine 1%. Um, in a 10 ml syringe and I tend to use a green needle just because it is easier um, and has got a longer longer needle. So the important thing is to f start find, find a starting point. Um, I introduce it into subcutaneous tissue and I aspirate first and then I um, infiltrate a little bit of um, the fluid which means the area will be anesthetized uh, quite quickly so the person won't feel any pain from there. And then I advanced, advanced the, the needle along the margin of the incision. It's quite bad. Okay, so I have the needle up here. I aspirate again just to make sure I'm not in the circulation and then I keep on uh, infiltrating some lignocaine as I retrieve, as I pull the, the needle out, which means that at the end, the whole area from here till there will be anesthetized. Um, I can then just turn my needle round, again aspirate, infiltrate a little bit in this area here so I know that they won't feel any pain. Um, then I introduce my needle again along along in the subcutaneous tissue, along the wound and I can get the whole length. Again I aspirate and then as I let let go, if I pull back the needle, I actually I introduce some fluid. Okay? Um, there's just this last area to, to be done. I know that I have infiltrated up until there, so I'll just go in here. They won't feel any pain at all. Um, again, aspirate, infiltrate as I pull back, and then this area here that still needs to be done. So quite mathematically, I've actually infiltrated along the whole incision. Um, Usually I can just check if, if they have any pain uh, by very gently just squeezing the margins. That's all I need because that's the place where I'm actually going to place the sutures. And if they have pain, then I can always infiltrate a little bit more. If the pain's gone, then I'm ready to start suturing. Take a forceps and I open up my suture. In this case, I have um, um, a silk sort of suture. Uh, the important thing is to take, pull it out. My, um, my forceps is holding it about in the upper third um, of, 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 of the, the first straight part of the needle. Um, and then I start suturing. It's very simple. Okay. Uh, you can see that there's the, quite a lot of tension in this in this suture, unlike these other sutures, which are actually quite easy to close. So in which case, I want to actually start approximating and taking the tension off. So um, the movement when I use the needle is actually, it's a wrist movement. Yeah? It's this sort of movement, not, not with my fingers. I hold it like that, okay? I take the margin of, um, of, of the wound, stay in the subcutaneous tissue. As you can see, I'm not going very deep, okay? And it's a wrist movement. I open up, take the needle, pull it through. Again, I help myself with the forceps, take it again, and go halfway. And I go about a decent centimeter or just under a centimeter. Okay. And I pull it through. Now you can close it by hand, but the easiest thing if you're not used to, to doing so is just drop the needle, um, pull 
the sutra through as much as you can. Hold it with your left hand and then with your right hand take the forceps to do two rounds and then pull it through. And as you can see it does a nice beautiful um, knot. Now that's not finished because if you let, let go then it will open up again so you need to take another and that's it that that'll that'll hold okay you can take one or twice two rounds that's no problem you cut it now and it seems now it's much more manageable you can already see where you can put your next sutures so again the important thing is not to handle the needle with your hands because you might actually puncture yourself and cause yourself infectious diseases. So again, take the middle, pull it through, take the needle, and as you can see it's, it's at right angles. Okay, I'm not holding the needle in this way or in that way. That will make my, my uh, will be squint in a way. So, I hold it, lift it up, give me a good size, decent size, at least a centimeter or about up, almost a centimeter. Okay, just pull it through. Okay, I let go, let go of the needle. Okay. With my left hand, I hold the long part, turn round twice, take the short bit, and it's important to have made it short, otherwise it'll be more difficult. Pull gently without breaking it. And then again, one or two more. Sorry. Important thing is to handle the tissues with care. Um, and, and obviously you will start to suture there where maybe you can see some spurting of blood or anything like this to allow yourself to get a better field. Same thing here. Important thing is like, look how my hand is, you know? I don't get entangled. My movement is in my wrist. It's not my fingers that move. That's the important bit because otherwise it becomes difficult. Again, I can put it to the side because I'm doing don't do them with my hand. And come as close as you can, when you do your two rounds, come as close as you can to, to the end, otherwise you'll have to pull through a lot. Hold it, and you can see I'm not pulling up, I'm just pulling across, so it's the, note, the knot that closes. You know, I'm not pulling on the skin. And then cut. You need to give yourself a decent length of, of the sutures, otherwise uh, you will have difficulties when you remove them after about five or six days according to the length you want to have it. And again, always handle the needle with your forceps. Okay? You might want to put one more here, but you just, just for beauty, but you could also leave it. It's always quite good maybe to leave just one centimeter, but because it's open and there was so much tension on this suture, okay, you can actually give it another stitch. So I let the needle go, come close, two rounds, catch the end of the other side and go across. And you know, a wound that was actually quite wide open and gapping has become quite an easy thing to do. And to finish, I might want to put one here at the end. So that's, that's reasonable, um, reasonable close closure. I will infiltrate um, at one point like this one, aspirate and infiltrate lignocaine. Then I will show it above, but you should be underneath it, just underneath the skin. I go along um, the whole length of the incision and aspirate then. And as I retrieve, I will be putting in lignocaine. From here, 
I will go up the way till I go to this part here. When I take it back, I infiltrate. And then I will always use a part that has got lignocaine in it, just along the way. Again, I put, I, I put my needle through, I aspirate, and then I infiltrate. I go in, go through, aspirate, and as I retrieve, I put in lignocaine, and again. That way, the whole incision should be um, should be pain free. Um, when I deal with such an incision, I will first of all take my markers, um, those anatomical parts that are easy that are easy to to recognize, like the corners. But in the corners, take a good bite, not too deep. Okay, just underneath the skin. and then approximate. Nice bite, because it's the corner. Okay, let go of everything. And it becomes an easy to manage wound now. So that's a reverse one, okay? You want to close it in two different directions. Again, I take an easy marker, which is this one here. I go in just underneath, not into the yellow bits, which is the under the subcutaneous fat. Pull it through. Take that part, the, the angle, take a nice bite. Because I don't want to be too close, otherwise it starts tearing. Let go of the needle. Now, if you can see, two rounds to the left, Okay, one to the right. Okay, they have to be in opposition, otherwise they'll open up. Okay, same thing. And then all you need to do is just put one, two in here, and you can see that there's some markings on the skin that you want to approximate one here and one here, that should do enough. The less you put in, probably the better, but um, probably in this one you could have put in two, like you would put in this one here. The wounds tend to contract, and therefore they start closing by themselves as well. This is just to help it a little bit. Okay, and a life wound, it would have closed up much better than this, because there's this, this, you know, the whole tissue is, is more together. Now, how would you deal with a moon-shaped sort of um, um, incision? Um, this is a bit more difficult because um, you may misjudge, you know, which parts should come together. So again, after infiltration, as I showed before, um, I would put in, I would definitely find the center point and approximate one center point with the other point and then I would put in like we did in the other ones. So it's, it's, it's about making the wound very easy and simple. So let's take the center point. Rather than starting here and moving in one direction, I will end up with one part being longer than the other and that makes it difficult. So what I will do is I just take the center, take a nice bite, shallow, you know, just underneath the skin, and approximate this bit here. So by now, the wound oops, will become very simple.
Okay, it becomes like two straight bits. Sometimes it might take one or two more sutures to get to this point. And then I can either half them again, and that might be all that you need, and in which case you only need three or four. Or you can just move because it's now easy to find which parts can belong to which parts. Okay, so and then you do, would do the same thing on this part here, maybe putting two, if maximum three different ones on it. Um, an alternative um, to wood closure using sutures um, is using stereo strips. You can start in the middle or you can start at the sides, doesn't matter. But the thing is that it's going to pull out. You can close. It's easy if somebody helps you. And the problem is if it's wet, then it's, it's likely to be more difficult to do because <coughs> the stereo strips won't stick. You can also take them by hand. You don't need to have any equipment, so you can just take them like this, put on, press, and close, okay? You can do it just by pulling your hands. I don't know if you can see. Press it together, hold it together. You have to put them quite close. Okay. And that will help a little bit primary closure. Obviously the best ones to do with stereo strips are the ones where um, it's not very deep, it's quite superficial. and it's not bleeding.